take it to the Lord in prayer. Now I know it was a it was a mellow sounding song, but you probably want to be excited about that. Probably want to be excited because like sometimes we tend to complicate some things. And if you just understood how simple that was, that you could take everything to God in prayer and he's re willing, ready and able to handle it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were praising. My bad. I thought, <laughs> I thought you were asking me a question. But yeah, yeah. So, so, so. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we go through, we have the challenge of, of, of complicating things and we find ourselves in some frustrating situations and we're trying to work our way, our way through it. Not understanding that God is like, if you would just chill out. If you would just come to me, if you would just take a knee real quick, breathe a little bit, right? Relax just a little bit. I got this. Trust me. Trust and believe God understood that you were going to go through whatever it is that you're going through before you were ever even born. Right? And he's already put some things in place to handle that. But you got to just be willing to trust him just a little bit. Right? Trust and obey for there is no other way. All right? Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Hold on. Let me just ask you, is the green light on? All right, perfect. I just want to make sure. So, man, God is so good, y'all. God is so good. And we have a lot to be excited about when we're talking about our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you all heard the verse that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about um, Joseph. But we're not going to, this is not a text where I'm necessarily going to be uh, 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 breaking down that this word means this or this word means that. But I just want to show, I just want to talk about some basic principles um, for our life um, that we can learn from the story of Joseph. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. I'm glad, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. So the verse that we came from, uh, Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, it says that, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, as I read that verse, what I'm coming to understand is that there's a lot that God is planning to do through the dreams that he has given to you. There's a lot that he's planning to do. And so it's important that you continue to hold on to your dream. As a matter of fact, last month we just celebrated uh, uh, Black to you also. I want to challenge you to pray to God that when you hear about the great things that these men and women did in the Bible, that you would not just pray for the strategy of what they did, but that you would pray for the spirit of what they did. That you would pray for the spirit of what they did. Because sometimes what tends to happen is that you might have a strategy, but sometimes it's hard to go forth with the strategy when you don't have the spirit. You feel me? Because, because one of the things... How many of you have a smartphone? Anybody have a smartphone in here? I have a smartphone, right? And as, as great as the smartphone is, as great of a, uh, of a tool as it is, if it's not energized, if it doesn't have power, right, it doesn't matter how, much, how, how many apps you download or what have you, like it can't do anything unless it has that energy. And so what you have to understand is that, that there is a spirit, there's a common spirit Amongst all these people that God that God has allowed us to see into their lives into in the Bible. And it's really the spirit that moves them into doing the things that they're doing. It's really the spirit that moves them and allows the strategy to be effective. All right. So when we talk about this story, we know that we're going to we're about to talk about the story of Joseph. I don't want you to just concentrate on the strategies, but I want you to, your prayer to be that God would give you the spirit that Joseph had. And so we start this story and Joseph is a young boy about 17 years old. And even there we find a principle because I want the young people to understand that might be in the audience today. And you've heard this before, but God is really like, like don't take it lightly when people say that God is willing to use young people. Right. You're talking about from the time that Joseph is 17 years old. God has put it on it, given him a dream, right? Given him a dream that one day his own brothers, his own father, right? His mother would eventually bow down to him. He's been given this dream. And so God is trying to give you inclinations from even now 
that, and watch this, God was trying to tell me some things back in the past, even when I was just 18, 19 years old. God had been telling me from the time I was 18, 19 years old, like I was telling you all before, that, that he wanted me to be a pastor. But I went away from the dream, right? And when I went away from the dream, right, it took me about 12 years to get back on board with the dream, right? But because I went away from the dream, there's some challenges that I ended up experiencing on the way. Some unnecessarily cha unnecessary challenges that really, I, I believe that there are certain things that God will allow you to go through, but there are certain things that you go through that God's like, you ain't have to go through all of that. And don't worry about it. I'll redeem you. Like, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring you back to the point where I need you to be, but you ain't have to go through all of that stuff on the way there. Amen. And, so, and so I didn't, God didn't necessarily need for me to experience going through a divorce in order to get to where I need to be. He didn't need for me to experience getting kicked out of law school in order for me to get to where I need to be. See what I'm saying? He didn't need for me to experience losing my job shortly after my kids were born in order for him to get me to where I need to be. So even from a young age, God is trying to work on your heart and show you this is the dream that I have for your life. And if you can grab hold of the dream from now, so, they, you will save yourself, man, f forget even just the spiritual stuff. You'll save yourself a lot of money if you focus on the dream that God has given you from now. <laughs> right? You'll save yourself a lot of energy, a lot of emotional heartache, right? Right? How many people have gone through some emotional things uh, because they decided not to live according to the dream that God had for them? And so God has a dream. And what I want you to understand also, is that dreams cost you something. As a matter of fact, that's the title of the dream. The co I'm, I'm sorry, the, the title of the dream. The title of the sermon is The Cost of a Dream. And what I've come to understand is that dreams cost you something. When we go back to referring to that, the, the, the dream that Martin Luther King had, that dream cost him something. Namely, his life. And you already know, most of you already know the story of Joseph. But the story of Joseph, we know that Joseph goes through a lot, right? There, Joseph goes, Joseph spends a whole lot of energy, a whole lot of time in the process of the dream. But I want you to hold on to your faith because we know that at the end of the dream, and watch this, God is so good because God has already told us that whatever it is, the dream that we have, whatever thoughts and whatever plans he has for us, even though it might come with a cost, he's already let us know that at the end of the dream, we win. He's already told us in Revelation that if you just continue holding on to me, you're going to be all right. So then there, there, there should be no reason then, we have no reason to not be willing to be faithful because whether, whether, it doesn't matter what we go through, we will win. So watch this. I'm actually off track. Let me get back on track, right? So we have this young man, Joseph, and he has the dream. And one of the things that I need for you all to do is to pay attention to this concept of clothes, right? I'm going to be all this. Every time I preach this sermon, it's a little hard for me to preach the sermon because everything is so intertwined in this story and I'm trying to like pull everything out, right? So, so just bear with me. Even if I repeat certain things, there's a reason why I'm repeating it. So one of the things that I want you all to pay attention to is that I want you to pay attention to how it is God reveals his will to you specifically, Right? We have his word, and that's well and good, and we need to be reading that word, right? But when we read the word, what I want you to understand is that God shows you through his word that there are some specific things that he tells different indi individuals, and it's specifically for them. And sometimes we understand the corporate view that God has for all of his people collectively, but sometimes we miss what God is trying to do for you as an individual, and sometimes we miss the specific thing and the specific calling that he has on our own individual lives because we have not paid attention to how it is that he speaks to us. So, for instance, one of the things I noticed for me, God speaks to me because he'll allow certain confirmations from different people in my life. Right. And if I pay attention to it, he'll, it, it it's like, for, watch this, for instance. For a while, my father had been trying to tell me that I should maybe look into project management, right? I was like, nah, dad, I was, I'm okay. You know, sounds nice, but that's, that's all well and good. But as I continue to, to, to go through things, all of a sudden, 
friends of mine are like, hey, you should probably look into project management. And then all of my friends would happen to be in project management, right? Then I'll read a book, and all of a sudden it'll say something, something, something. It'd be off topic and say project management. I'm just like, wow, what, why is everything right now in my life talking about project management, right? So, 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 so I'm just using that as an example as far as what we need to do is begin to understand how, how it is that God speaks to us. I remember my friend, remember the reason why I became a pastor, or the reason why I'm here now, back in 2003, my friend's mother said, listen, you need to become a pastor and you need to go to Oakwood specifically and, become, and, and, and go through the program that they have and become a pastor. Didn't listen to it, right? Years, years later, about 10 years later, she says this very same thing to me. I decide to listen to her. Now I find myself in front of you all, in front of you all as a pastor. But, but that's not one of those things that I got because I was necessarily just reading. That was one of those things that I began to pay attention to how it is that God speaks to me. And I want us to begin to really understand that. Does he speak to you through a song? Does he speak to you when you're watching, maybe even through a, a television show, and he allows something to be revealed to you through watching the television show? Or maybe you're, maybe you're um, listening to a song, or, or maybe you're reading, reading a, another book of some sort. Or maybe he gives you visions and dreams yourself, right? But how is it that God is speaking to you today? Maybe he's speaking to you through particular circumstances, right? right? Maybe, maybe he's trying to tell you, to leave a particular situation, right? Are you hearing his voice and what he's trying to say to you? Are you hearing his voice and what he's trying to say to you? And there's some things that came to me this morning also that I want to leave you all with. So watch this. One of the things that we see in the story of Joseph is that it is dangerous when we have not instituted functional families. And while, if you, look at the, if you look at Jacob, we have some dysfunction within Jacob, right? Because Jacob has had a bunch of sons, but his favorite sons, he, he doesn't treat any of his older sons the way he treats this younger son. And it's clear and obvious that Joseph is his favorite son, right? Now... Jacob is actually in a perplexing situation himself because Jacob didn't necessarily ask to have two wives. But because of a situation, because of a prior family member, right, who had some dysfunction also, it leads to a dysfunctional family here. And then it leads to a situation to where because of the dream, imagine that God gives you a dream and yet your family doesn't respect the dream. Imagine if you had a family that didn't believe in you. I know none of y'all come from families that don't believe in y'all. I know all of y'all, everybody in your family probably believe that you're going to make it. But some people come from some families where they, their family does not believe in them. And so, and, so, and so Joseph finds himself in a situation, and now you've got to be careful. Even when you have a dream, you've got to be careful not to just share the dream at the wrong time. And not to just be pushing the dream that God has for you in everybody's face, right? Because one of the things that happens is that Joseph is the father's favorite son. And then he goes and sometimes God is telling you, listen, I've given you a dream, but that dream right now is just for you to hold on to. Right? But Joseph is like, no, nah, let me go flaunting this dream in front of everybody. In, in my nice jacket that my father has given me. I'm the only one he's given a jacket to. The, as a matter of fact, not only am I the only one that he's given a jacket to, but I'm wearing the jacket, right? And, and they're out there in the fields doing work, and he sent me to go kind of spy on them and then report back to him what's happening with them. And so sometimes we have a dream, and God's like, listen, I'm giving you the dream, but if you don't handle the dream properly, you're going to bring a lot of hate upon yourself. Right? A lot of hate upon yourself. And, 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 and pay attention to this, because if you look throughout the story of Joseph, there are a lot of things that are tied into the clothing that he's wearing. And oftentimes, a change in his clothing is a change in the level that Joseph is at. Right? Pay attention to this. Pay attention to this, right? And so I'm actually skipping some of the stuff that, that I wanted to talk about. But watch this. And this is why you have to pay attention. This is one of the reasons why I want you to pay attention to the circumstances and how God speaks to you, right? 